Hello and welcome. My name is Hannah Turbyville, and I am pleased to introduce our next speaker and the 2021 Lasker Award recipient, Dr. Max Cooper. Dr. Cooper began his medical career at Tulane University Medical School, where he obtained his medical degree before completing pediatric residency training. Today, he is a Georgia Research Alliance eminent scholar, professor of pathology and laboratory medicine, and member of the Vaccine Center at the Emory University School of Medicine. Among his many scientific discoveries, Dr. Cooper established the dual nature of the immune system with Robert Good, discovered antibody class switching by B cells with Paul Kincaid, and described the lymphoid follicle associated epithelial N cells in the intestine with Dale Bachman. His laboratory currently studies the evolution of adaptive immunity and explores the use of lamprey monoclonal antibodies for diagnosis and therapy of infectious diseases and lymphoid malignancies. Dr. Cooper is a former president of the American Association of Immunologists, the Clinical Immunology Society, and the Kunkel Society. A few of his many honors include the Sandoz Prize in Immunology, American Association of Immunologists Lifetime Achievement Award, Avery Landsteiner Prize, AAI Excellence in Mentoring Award, and Albert Lasker Basic Medical Research Award. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Max Cooper to our virtual stage as the recipient of the 2021 Lasker Award. At the beginning of this uh, decade, actually uh, the millennium, uh, Jan Klein and I joined forces to uh, do experiments to address the question of how our adaptive immune system evolved. At the time, we knew that from the work of many investigators that all jawed vertebrates, even uh, down to the cartilaginous fishes, sharks, skates, and rays, have basically the same kind of um, adaptive immune system that we have. They have a thymus where they generate T cells, they generate B cells in their hematopoietic tissues by putting together immunoglobulin sequences initiated by an enzyme called activation-induced deaminase. Uh, but uh, the immediate, uh, the uh, more basal species like ostracoderms uh, no longer exist. We only know about them through their fossil remains. But there are uh, uh, jawless vertebrates, lampreys and hagfish that are considered to be even more basal than uh, the uh, jawed vertebrates. So our strategy was to go back and look, uh, try to uh, define an immune system uh, elements in lampreys and hagfish. Uh, uh, the, um, the model that we used most was the sea lamprey. There are about 40 something species of lampreys and half of them are predatory like the sea lamprey. This is a, this cartoon uh, shows the life cycle of these uh, jawless vertebrates. They live for much of their life uh, after fertilized, uh, fertilized egg hatching in uh, the uh, sandy loam or mud of uh, tributaries that flow into large bodies of water like the sea, the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, after three or four years or more, they undergo a metamorphosis, they get larger, retract the uh, lids of their eyes so they can see their prey. They latch on to fish and erode their skin and uh, feed on their blood and tissue fluids. And one lamprey can kill, it's estimated about 200 grams, uh, kilograms of uh, fish in a year. And when they entered the uh, Great Lakes of North America through connections with the Atlantic Ocean, they wiped out the native fish there. Uh, most of our studies are with the larvae, and if you cut because they're easier to get and keep. If you cut one in half, this is how it looks. It's mostly a uh, muscle uh, encased uh, intestine. This little organ here called typosol runs the length of the intestine, and this is where blood cells are formed. Uh, the ventral aspects of the kidneys are also uh, uh, hematopoietic sites. Uh, my colleague uh, and his uh, group had identified uh, a 
small uh, 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 transcription factor, spy B, that's uh, important in uh, the development of hematopoietic cell lineages, and in particular B cells, which we was, were particularly interested in. Uh, it's called spy B, and they found by in situ hybridization a small round cell in this type of cell that expressed that uh, uh, transcription factor. Our strategy to see if there really were lymphocytes in these creatures uh, was to uh, tease out the cells from this uh, type of cell, run them through a flow cytometer, and then by forward and light scatter, uh, discriminate populations of cells in there. And we saw this little button of cells that when stained with regular blood uh, stain looked like lymphocytes. And even by transmission EM, they looked like lymphocytes. But that only means they have uh, mainly nucleus, very little cytoplasm and not many organelles in it. So our strategy was to collect these cells and then create complementary cDNA libraries and get sequences uh, analyzed from those uh, cDNA libraries. And so after we got the first uh, 2000 sequences and uh, uh, translated them into amino acid sequences and then uh, annotated our catch by using the uh, database from, uh, from a national database in CBI, uh, we found many different genes that our lymphocytes use for mobility, for uh, metabolism and other uh, functions. What we didn't find uh, were any of the cardinal elements of our adaptive immune system as listed here. We went back and got another couple of thousand sequences, annotated them, and with the same result. So at this time, Zev Panzer joined my laboratory, and Zev and I decided uh, that maybe since we knew that there was some evidence from the uh, mid 60s that lampreys can mix specific uh, binding factors or agglutinins if they're injected with uh, red blood cells, say from another species, uh, there must be some basis for that. So we thought perhaps if we uh, immunostimulated them, we could catch them in the act, so to speak. Uh, and when we injected these lamprey larvae with a, a cocktail that included live E. coli uh, bacteria, uh, sheep red blood cells, and plant uh, mitogens, PHA or pokeweed mitogen, we saw indeed an increase in cells uh, in the immunostimulated animals uh, that indicated a population of larger uh, lymphocytes. And on uh, isolation of these and staining, they look like lymphoblasts. So we made a selective cDNA library uh, looking for genes that are expressed preferentially by these lymphoblasts. And we were disappointed in that we uh, got lots of leucine rich repeats. But a summer student, uh, Jill Setlin, wished to learn some molecular biology during her summer vacation from University of Michigan. And her project was to uh, actually sequence these leucine rich repeat proteins, which we weren't particularly interested in because every living thing on our planet uses leucine rich repeat uh, proteins for various functions. <clears throat> uh, but at the end of the summer, when Jill showed us her sequences, it was an aha moment, uh, our Eureka uh, moment, because it was clear that surprisingly, every one of these sequences that were complete uh, ESTs or almost complete, uh, were different in sequence from each other. The ends of them were the same or constant, uh, but all of these other regions that are indicated in these blocks uh, that they shared, they had different sequences and different uh, uh, ESTs had different lengths because they had different blocks of these 
24 uh, amino acid residues. Uh, uh, a model for this longest series uh, sequence in that particular uh, uh, slide before uh, is shown here. Uh, so all of them had a, an N-terminal LRR that was quite lengthy and a, a, a long uh, C-terminal LRR. Uh, in between is where the different sequences were. Uh, this LRR1 of 18 residues, a connecting peptide at this end, and brown of 13 residues. And these green blocks were the ones of 24 amino acids that varied in numbers for each of the, uh, for the different sequences. Now, the stalk region, uh, was, which is constant, was also interesting in that it had uh, it was rich in threonines and prelines, which suggested that it might be flexible. Uh, and it uh, also had uh, a uh, sequence that indicated it might be a GPI cleavage sound, uh, site or uh, a phosphor, uh, phosphatidyl and ositol linkage if it, it was cleaved here uh, to be used to link to a cell, a wall. And the carboxy terminus uh, had, was interesting in that it had, uh, was rich in cysteines, which could, I'll come back to, but could be used for uh, linkage uh, for disulfide bonds. Uh, uh, Gertz Earhart, uh, created a construct with a, a, a tag and expressed this uh, uh, sequence in a uh, cell from a thymoma cell line, a human uh, cell line, mouse, mouse thymoma cell line. And he, using his uh, tag, he could show that it came to the surface. And if he treated those cells, those transduced cells, he could uh, uh, treat them with a phospho, a, 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 phospholipase of bacterial origin, and it cleaved off this uh, transduced uh, molecule from the cell surface. So we call them variable lymphocyte receptors. Uh, we looked then at many different larvae to uh, uh, see if they, uh, what the sequences would be in multiple uh, animals. And this uh, phylogenetic cartoon illustrates three points. They're all different except for three pairs here, here, and here. Uh, and all of those came from immunostimulated animals, as I indicated uh, uh, just before, with what a reviewer called everything but the kitchen sink in the stimulation. Uh, the other uh, point is that there are only these three duplications, and they all came from, as I mentioned, the immunostimulated animals. And the uh, black asterisks indicate uh, cells that were uh, where single cell uh, sequencing was done. And in each case, uh, the cells only expressed one allele, only one sequence for LRR. So the question was, how do you get this kind of diverse DLR repertoire? What's its genetic basis? Uh, uh, Chris Amamiya in Seattle had created a uh, genomic library and pieces uh, starting with sperm from an adult sea lamprey. And he sent us his library and we uh, screened it with our uh, probes for the sequences for the BLR that we were seeing. But we can only find one BLR gene and it was very incomplete. It had a signal peptide parts of the N-terminal and C-terminal LRRs uh, that were separated by large stretches, 6 kb each here, uh, of uh, uh, non-coding sequences and uh, a complete sequence for the stalk region. But when we were able to get flanking sequences surrounding this germline BLR in complete gene, we found LRR sequences that if somehow brought into this uh, incomplete germline gene and stitched in and the uh, non-coding intervening regions spliced out could uh, account for the mature BLR genes that we were seeing. And when we use forward and reverse uh, probes or uh, 
And then we were able to get products uh, for uh, in lymphocytes, not only of this large uh, incomplete VLR gene uh, that is shown at the top, uh, but also smaller ones. And all of these were indeed mature VLRs. And we uh, sequenced some two dozen of these. And in this case, they too were different as before. So uh, this was our model at that point in the uh, study. Uh, we, all, we sent uh, uh, almost 700 of these uh, LRR, VLR sequences to our collaborators at the uh, in uh, NCBI, uh, Igor Rogozin and Lax uh, Eyer, and they calculated that uh, given the variation that we were seeing, that uh, the potential repertoire if they, that was expressed for these VLRs on lymphocytes could be greater than 10 to the 14th power, uh, equivalent to the uh, potential repertoire of our B lymphocytes receptors uh, that are involved heavy and light chain gene assemblies. So we thought this uh, in our guessing of how this worked, that they must somehow be secreted or released from these cells in a multimeric form if they accounted for the agglutinins that had been seen before uh, that were induced by immunization with human red blood cells. We set out to test this model, and here you can see the hand of the uh, person in the lab, uh, an insulin syringe. These uh, lamprey larvae are very small, from 12 to 15 uh, centimeters uh, long, and they're uh, like a small pencil. If we inject into their salomic cavity, which is like our abdominal cavity, you can only inject a small amount of material as with this uh, small needle and an insulin syringe. Uh, one other point is that before we started these studies, we made a monoclonal antibody uh, in mice that is specific for the stalk region. So we could recognize cells or products uh, of this uh, that were made in response to the immunization. And so when uh, after two weeks after immunization with the uh, uh, red blood cells, O positive human red blood cells, as had been reported before, uh, all of the lamprey made agglutinins uh, of a low titer, about one in a hundred uh, level. Uh, but if uh, Pangoa, who uh, was injecting these, uh, or uh, Matt Alder, uh, who is uh, a student in the lab, uh, with a booster immunization, the titer was increased by 24 fold uh, about. And if that antibody to the stalk region was used to clear this, uh, these uh, sera, it wiped out and then all of these agglutinins uh, or the agglutinin response entirely, indicating that, uh, that they were the cause of the agglutination. Now, the cells that were making these variable lymphocyte receptors, the PLRBs, uh, were present in blood vessels. Here you're looking at cross sections of the gill region uh, and with the filaments on the side. And these, uh, all of them are in uh, vessels, the green cells that are making BLRB. Uh, we immunized uh, with the bacillus anthracis uh, uh, spores, anthrax spores, and this is before and after immunization. The animals were also injected with a dye that was incorporated into cells uh, dividing and, and producing DNA. And you can see these cells, yellow cells, that are expressing both the red and the green uh, after uh, immunization are increased in number. Now, the cells that are secreting the antibodies are plasma blast, as shown here, that uh, Matt Alder isolated. Uh, he could pull them out because they still express the GPI-linked receptors as well as secreting them. Uh, the animals also had mature plasma cells with many more uh, vessels lined by rough in the plasma reticulum. Brant Heron then used a Western blot 
to look at the products that were secreted uh, uh, with an antibody to uh, 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 the BLRB. And they were quite large. Uh, but if he treated with uh, a something that broke disulfide bonds, mercaptoethanol, they fell into smaller pieces. So this was uh, hard to look at. So he designed a way to make monoclonal antibodies for further analysis. So he immunized lampreys, prepared uh, uh, messenger RNA, and expressed cDNA clone by clone in human embryonic kidney cells uh, to, uh, and then uh, looked at the, their products in uh, 96 well plates. This allowed him to uh, isolate a single DLRB uh, antibody. And working with Ken Rue at Florida State, he had this found this image that's indicated in this cartoon. It looks like our IgM antibodies, except that it has only one uh, type of chain uh, and no, uh, uh, no other chains. If he truncated the uh, construct, uh, here to delete the uh, core region, which has the disulfide bonds, uh, he could show. Uh, then they're secreted uh, as uh, singlets. Uh, Yang Wu Ban, uh, Han in uh, Ian Wilson's laboratory at the Scripps Clinic was able to get a structural analysis of uh, this DLRB antibody. Uh, binding to its H trisaccharide antigen, O positive antigen. And you can see here hydrogen bonds that are crucial. One with the, in this DLR2, I mean LRRB2, two in this N LRRB, and then other strong bonds uh, with a tryptophan that uh, is on a, a loop that comes out that's in, uh, by a region in this area that's hypervariable. At this point, uh, it looked as if this was our model uh, and that uh, I thought the uh, interpretation was that B cells are derived before T cells. Uh, uh, a particular interest to, uh, to me, but it turned out in work that we did with Zev and with Kasahara in uh, Japan, that there are three of these DLRs VLRB that we've been talking about before, and two more VLRA and C, the latter one being discovered by Kasahara. They all are flanked by these uh, donor uh, LRR cassettes, uh, hundreds of them, and they're put together. We made monoclonal antibodies that could discriminate them on the basis of their constant regions, which differ from each other, but are always the same, to show that they actually have prototypic T lineage like cells, as well as B lineage type cells. Uh, and their patterns of uh, gene uh, expression during their development for the BLRA and C, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, alpha beta like T cell and the gamma delta like T cell lineage, uh, as well as the BLRB. Uh, crucial uh, genes, uh, cytidine deaminase one and two, discovered by uh, uh, Panzer and his colleagues, uh, or they see this one, CDA2, is much like our AID that I mentioned earlier, that's essential for assembly of uh, recombinatorial assembly of uh, our T and B cell uh, receptor genes. Uh, uh, the CDA2, which is expressed by VLRB lineage cells uh, selectively, uh, and A, uh, uh, gamma and delta, they won. So it looks as if these prototypic, and I don't have time to go into all the features we've uh, shown for them, which are responsible for uh, cell-mediated immunity. Uh, the BLRC is more like our gamma delta T cells, BLRA is like our alpha beta T cells, and the uh, BLRBs. So in conclusion, we think that these the, pro the development of the programs, uh, genetic programs uh, for two prototypic T-like cells and one B-like cells uh, in both jawless and jawed vertebrates implied that this, uh, in the, the last common vertebral ancestor, these genetic programs were already developed, but they selected different types of uh, mechanisms to make 
receptors for the VLRA, B, and C in both hagfish and lampreys in case of the jawless vertebrates. Uh, and had I more time, I would tell you about the uh, potential uses of uh, these uh, lamprey antibodies, which have many uh, features that suggest they will have uh, important biomedical bio uh, uses. These are some of the people whose names I mentioned as we went along. Many people uh, indicated were involved in these studies. I've indicated uh, them uh, as we uh, progressed, and these are our supporting agencies. Uh, lastly, I'd like to uh, acknowledge that I'm a scientific finder of uh, Novab, a company that produces lamprey monoclonal antibodies for biomedical uses. Thank you.